How you doing, guys? It's your boy Nando, and you know what this is. It's the Pound for Pound Boxing Show in association of Seconds Out Coffee. Today, got a very special guest fighting on the 4th of September in Leeds against Hopi Price, pro boxer Zahid Hussein. Let's see if we could get him on right now. How you doing, champ? Yeah, I'm all good, man. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Just want to say thank you for taking your time to speak to us today. It's a pleasure. Uh, no, it's an honor, man. It's not an issue at all. Fantastic. Thank you. I really appreciate that. First of all, just want to say, um, want to ask, how's uh, training and how's camp going? Yeah, all good, man. The camp's going well. Training's been going well. I won't necessarily call it camp because I've been in training since uh, when we were supposed to fight the first time, really. Um, apart from the little glitch of being ill and whatnot. Um, yeah, I've been in training ever since. Brilliant. I know it's been a frustrating 18 months for you. Obviously, your last fight was against Luke Flash um, pre-COVID, uh, February 2020. First of all, let's talk about that fight. Sum up your analysis of uh, that um, unanimous win against Luke Flash as well um, back in February. Yeah, I mean, it's been that long. I can't even remember it. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, um, I do remember parts of him. Um... It was just, I think it was a pretty strong lad. Uh, and we brought quite a lot of people down as well. Um, and uh, yeah, I just remember just staying, staying, staying on the job, mainly, and uh, throwing the odd right hand. Yeah. Brilliant. And you said, obviously, you were uh, scheduled to fight before. Um, what, what exactly happened there and uh, who was the opponent at the time? Uh, so, yeah, well, I was supposed to fight Hopi in... Uh, uh, February on the uh, Warren undercard then, um, but I got I had a little illness, but I tried to hide it, you know, from my coach because I didn't because it's such a big opportunity on a uh, matchroom boxing, such a big platform, um, you know I couldn't let it go and um, so I was training. The coach could see that something not right with me, um, and I'm just not telling him. Eventually, it just you know it was just catching up on me, and I had to just tell him. That I'm, I'm ill, so he told me to go ring doctors. Obviously, because of COVID rules and whatnot, I explained the sim I've, I explained the symptoms over the phone, and uh, yeah, just Tom's looking in the mirror. Tons basically had tonsillitis. Um, yeah, so they give me some uh, antibiotics, and I was all right after a week. But well, yeah, after a week after the after the call, but um, it was just the weight issue, obviously, of how things, obviously how. The short time we had for the fight, I think five weeks notice, and um, being ill for a week, I couldn't really hold the weight after this. Yeah, I want, I want the right idea. Maybe it was a blessing in disguise because um, obviously that's a big opportunity, Wembley Arena. Now, an even bigger opportunity, bigger event, the Zone, yeah. and also in Leeds, in Headingley. How does that feel? Yeah, I mean, I just like you said, blessing in disguise, hundred percent, like could have been written this you know what i mean like it's in a much better place uh uh got yeah twenty thousand people in the arena you know oh, it's gonna be it's gonna be mad man and we're both from leeds yeah so, you know it's a it's a it's a home show really yeah that's brilliant um obviously he's a he's a hot prospect at the moment five and oh um you're 16 and one you've got a lot of experience over this kid what makes you different, apart from the experience, what makes you different compared to these other five opponents and um, how will you get the job done? Um, obviously, his uh, first five opponents were obviously learning fights. They, they weren't obviously at the pinnacle. They're not, they're not um, on them sort of levels. And even same with me, really, I've had a lot of fights, um, obviously, um, a lot of learning fights. And um, I had um, I had a what do you call it? I had um, a different manager before Steve Wood, and um, I wasn't really getting the fights that I w that I would have actually liked, or you know the um, opponents were kind of running away because of the um, money that they were asking for and whatnot. But um, now obviously things are sorted with Steve now, and um, you know these are the we want opponents with winning records, and um, that's how I want to go. Brilliant. And um, obviously, let's talk about the your division at the moment. Beating Hobie Price puts you straight up there as well. 
and your division's been heating up for for a while, and now it's got a lot better. You had uh, recently um, Lee Wood capture the WBA regular title. Kid Galahad become IBF. Uh, Rumours that Lee Wood might vacate the British title and Louis Lynn might fight for it. Uh, Jordan Gill is going to go for the European title. How excited are you to get into that mix by beating Hobie yeah. Price and getting into that mix? Um, me, originally, I've actually moved to Super Bantamweight anyway. But um, Box Trek, I've not really updated it because, well, they have, but what happened was obviously I'd, um, I'd, I had, I I think on my, the fight that I lost, I went down Super Bantamweight. Um, and then I had two, I just had two fights just to get me out there. Um, obviously, I didn't have to make the Super Bantamweight weight, so I just done it at Featherweight. But my original division is uh, Super Bantamweight, but it just needs updating on um, Box Trek, really. But I used to be a featherweight, yeah. Um, but I was making the weight very, very easy. Um, the, I was literally, you know, just making it easy, pissing it every time. Um, and the coach said, look, you could do super banter weight because, you know, like three weeks out of these featherweight fights, I was like nine stone two, literally just two pounds over, you know, and, you know, not really killing myself. So he goes, you could do super banter weight. So I did super banter weight, and even that I was. I was, I was nice with it, and um, yeah, that's the way I'm I'm sticking at. Um, just be updating on the even this fight. It's uh, I think it's a eight stone. It's either eight stone ten or eight stone twelve. It's depending. They're trying to get a I think a central area title online or some sort of title, so it could be on that be at that weight. Um, Brilliant. There's just little things going on in the background for it. Do you want to go through the traditional route of obviously going through the central title? English, British, Commonwealth, European, or if the opportunity comes to, you know, go for the European or go for Commonwealth straight away, etc. Would you Would you go for that? Um, I would like to go through the t traditional route, but um, it's whatever's best, really. Honestly, like whatever I could get. Um, you know, I'm I'm thirty now. Um, you know, I want to give it. A, I want to give it about four or five years. Um, yeah whatever comes man i just gotta take it with both hands brilliant obviously you're from leeds main event leeds boy uh josh warrington against lara can you yeah. get the job done this time hopefully you can yeah you know um it's a tough fight but um like we say we didn't i don't, I don't think josh was right in the first one so um hopefully you know he overcomes it this time and um you know corrects their wrongs that's brilliant um, before I let you go, champ, do you have a message for your fans and what can they expect on the 2nd of September against Hobie Price? Yeah, man, I just want to thank everyone that's supported so far, you know, bought tickets, um, spend their hard-earned money, um, everyone that's going to tune in, even in the zone, you know, big up everybody that's just basically interested. Um, yeah, you're going to expect a very exciting fight and a very exciting show as we've got Connor Ben, uh, Katie Taylor and many more. Um, it's probably gonna. It's the first show as well after COVID that's allowing crowds. Am I right? If I'm right in the uh, in the UK, so yeah, um, yeah, man, it's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be fireworks, isn't it? Amazing, and uh, I want to correct myself as well. It's the fourth of September, not the second. Uh, oh, did probably, you say second? I didn't uh, realize. <laughs> yeah, but that's brilliant. Uh, we, it's gonna be an amazing card, like you said, Connor Ben. Um, I think Ebony Bridges is on there as well. Katie Taylor. Yeah, and um, yeah. the Leeds derby between you and Hobie Price, so that's yeah. brilliant. And uh, we'll wait for that, yeah, man. Me too. I can't wait, man. I'm craving some pizzas, some burgers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Quick yeah, question, man. champ not not to stir the pot and everything, but it, yeah. in your opinion, is this fight going to go the distance? Um, I can't really say to be honest. If I catch him sweet, then it may not, but <laughs> I mean, other than that. Um, it's going to go my way, either way. Brilliant. Jam, I want to wish you both the best of luck on the 4th of September. It's going to be a cracking fight, a cracking show. And I want to say thank you for taking the opportunity to speak to me. Today. And um, I wish you the best of luck and hope the rest of your training and everything goes well. No, thank you, man. Appreciate it for having me. You know, call me anytime. I'm there. Anytime, Jam. Take care. Stay safe. All right. Thank you. Stay safe. Thank Bye.